Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Hey, my name is Stephanie. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. We have been gradually going through this book called The Atomic Habits by James Clear. So I'm going to walk you through just run. We are on what chapter are we on? I think chapter six. Um, so it says motivation is overrated. Environment often matters more. And this is super interesting. So as you're tuning in, uh, where are you tuning in from? How are you doing? Hey, it's morning. I know it's later on the East Coast. I'm on East Coast time. And so if you're just getting up or if you've been up for a little while, I'm curious, what does your morning routine look like? So do you have a morning routine? Have you maybe fallen off of your morning routine? So we get up every morning and we uh, shake up our ketones. We go for a walk. My husband and I, unless it's raining, take the dogs out. We listen to a podcast. We listen to our Bible. We talk. We work out, dive into reading. Sometimes we intermittent fast. Sometimes we eat breakfast. This morning I made a protein waffle. I've actually been eating them all week. So I have not been intermittent fasting. So just because I've been, we've been working out harder than we have been and I needed it. So I was like, I need, I need some food. So I've not been, I've not been intermittent fasting, but how are you doing? How is your morning going? If you found yourself kind of going back and not doing the things that you want to do, uh, today can be the day. Today can be the day that you dive back in. Don't mess up good for perfect. So if you need to write that down somewhere, I often say don't mess up good for perfect. What that means is, is it might not be the perfect day. It might not be the perfect environment. It might not look the way that you want it to look, but start, start something, go for a walk, move your body, pick anything to read or listen to and just start. So we've been going through this book. Um, I'd love for you to do a couple things. Where are you tuning in from and tell me how your morning usually looks and press the share button below so that other people can just find a community and have some hope and support really. So we're diving into this. We're on chapter six. It's um, the atomic habits by James clear. This is, this is, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what chapter six is about. And it's really interesting because actually I can relate 100% to what he's saying. And I bet you can too, if you actually listen to the con like the content behind it. So it starts off with, um, a healthcare physician and her goal in her hospital was to help people choose better options, right? So the entire beginning is um, all she did was switch around the cafeteria and she put water bottles in different places. She switched and put the pop lower. She moved the kitchen around and she didn't even tell anybody. But over the course of six months, people in the hospital, their staff, their employees started choosing better foods. They were drinking more water all because of placement. And I thought, isn't that interesting? So they placed baskets of water in the front instead of in the back. They put the pop on the bottom. They put snacks further away. And I thought, isn't that like our environment? Because I bet, let me know if this is you. My, like, I don't really have a hard time saying no to sweet things. For me, I like salty. So I love chips. I love nachos. I love chips and cheese. I love anything like that. So for me, if a bag of chips is sitting on the counter, it's, easier for me to slip in there and grab some if I but if I don't see it I, don't, I won't go and grab it the only thing that I would I would like start sweating over if it was sitting on the counter for me to say no to would be like a pile of chocolate chip cookies so it made me realize like we are currently staying in Florida we've been staying with some friends for two weeks we're not traveling uh we have not left this home just so you all know um so we're quarantined with some friends in their home uh, and so, but what's interesting is in the home, there is, just so you know, there's plenty of little treats and snacks and things that they have here. Now, in the very beginning when we first got here, I was like, oh my goodness, I will, I mean, these things remind me of being a kid, like Debbie snacks and little like gummy things. I mean, just all the little things. Can you think of all the things that you ate when you were young? Right? So then I was like, oh. <gasps> This could be detrimental. This could be detrimental. But here's the thing. All of it is lower. So like they've got counters, right? They're lower in little baskets tucked in the cupboards. And so in the very beginning, it was a mindset. It was a couple days of like, I know there's Debbie snacks. I know there's cookies. I know there's chips. But what's so interesting is I have been doing my morning stuff, 
uh, filling up my water bottle, having water all over the place so that kids can eat, drink it and grab it. And it's not visibly, like visible to where I could easily grab it. So if I don't, if I walk in the kitchen, I don't see it. I'm not going to go digging to find something. I'm just not that person. You might be, but I bet you if like raise your hand, if you have something on your cupboard right now and you are on your counters or visible that if you walk by it, you're like, Oh, I can have a little bit of that. Or, you know, I would say what 85 to 90% of us are home. There are still some people that are working. Thank you for all the medical people or the people that are working at the grocery stores, providing service for people. Um, there are so many people that are still working and helping, right? There are also 90% of more people that are home with their kids walking through their kitchen. And so here's my one encouragement. He talks about this in the book. He says, people often choose products, not because of what they are. So for example, not like the cookies or the snacks or your kids snacks, but because of where they are, where they're placed. And so he said, if I walk into a kitchen and I see a plate of cookies, it's going to be harder to say no then if you walk into your kitchen and your kids' snacks are lower, you've got to bend down, you've got to open up the cupboard lower, they're not visible. So my one action step for everybody today is look at the things that might cause you in your kitchen or on your counters or even at your level that might be causing you to go, I want that, I need that, I crave that, and shift things around. Like that's what this hospital did is they moved things around keep water bottles on your counter, keep the water, or if you've got like box water, bottled water, you know, like the sparkling drinks that are a better option, keep all that in the forward front of your refrigerator, put the snacks that you would choose in the forward front of your refrigerator so you don't have to dig in the back, the pickles, the hard boiled eggs, the the nuts, all of those. If you keep everything visible in your eye, you're going to grab those more than digging for everything on, or like grabbing the stuff on the counter. Is this making sense? So, Environment is the invisible hand that shapes human behavior. I thought that was a great little quote. So your environment is the invisible hand that's going to shape your behavior, especially over these next couple weeks, because we're probably all going to be still quarantined for the next couple weeks, right? And while it might be a little bit more of a discipline for you, if you can simply change up your environment and hide things or put things in a different spot, you're going to make way better choices. I promise. I promise. So the book is great. Uh, He said, items at eye level tend to be purchased or grabbed or chosen. And then, um, so he said, for example, if you want to remember to take your medicine, you put it on your nightstand. If you want to practice your guitar, you keep it where you're going to play it, right? If you want to remember to send thank yous, you put your stack of thank yous on your desk. If you want to drink more water, you fill up water bottles and put them all around your house or in different stations so you go and grab the water. So it's changing up your environment. It's super, super important. It's something simple that everybody on here can do today is changing up the environment, helping create better habits, better choices for you in the long run. So if you want to make a habit a big part of your life, make the cue a big part of your environment. So it's a great book. How many of you have actually picked up the book and are reading it? And this is the last phrase I'll say. He says, be the designer of your world and not merely the consumer. Be the designer. You get to design your kitchen. You get to design your living room. You get to design where everything is placed and put in your home. And so the kids can bend down low, dig in the cupboards to go find their snacks. But this is the book that we're going through, Atomic Habits, and it's super great. It's going to help you create systems in your life, especially over this time while you're at home, making better choices and so that you don't come out of this like going, I wish I would have. I Don't be the I wish or regret, right? Be the person that even if it's not perfect, even if it's not the workout you would have done at the gym, even if it's not the exact foods that you would have chosen, choose better in everything you do. Don't hit the alarm clock. Get up and go for a walk. Shower. Get out of your jammies. I am living in t-shirts and shorts, but like I've changed. Uh, Shower. You could do your hair. I have to go put on some makeup. I feel better when I'm physically looking better. Make the best choices possible. Again, don't mess up good for perfect. And I bet you'll come out of this. We all will come out of this either feeling amazing and able to like get back on track or going, I've got to start over. Don't be a starter over. So where can you buy the book? Uh, Amazon, I'm sure. So I don't have a link or anything. You could, if you have audible, so we have an auto, would you guys like, I've done this before. So I'm on Instagram, go to keto mom secrets. It's an Instagram and I'm going to share. I've got like, I just sent it to a friend. She said, what books have you read? I'm going to go share a whole list of books over on Instagram that are my favorite Audible books. So there's an app called Audible, 
and then we just buy books through there. I love to listen to them versus I like to have the book. Do you prefer to listen to a book or read a book? I'm curious. Do you guys listen or read? So I love to do both. I love to physically have a book in my hands, uh, but I often prop up my phone and listen to books and go through them way quicker. So I love to do both. This one we're going through this way, but usually it's an audible book that I listen to when I'm cooking, when I'm showering, when I'm putting on my makeup. If the kids are busy and they're all in the pool, I'll have an earbud in my ear and I'm listening to a book. So it will build you up. It will help you get through this time. It will help you stay positive and inspired and motivated. You might want to share it with other people because so many people need to hear from you. So I hope you guys have a great day. And yes, I'd love to know, do you like to listen? Do you like to read? How is your morning routine going? If it's gone out the door, bring it back. Go get it. Change up your environment today. I hope you guys have an amazing day and we'll talk to you soon.